crowded metro train in the middle of winter and the influenza virus is searching for victims. Inside every human target touched by the virus, an immunological response starts. However, this extraordinary world is just a 3D rendering, but probably a realistic impression of what happens in every cell, in every one of us, 24 hours a day. Probably. Our microscope technology is superb, but optical imaging techniques have reached a barrier set by the laws of physics. This optical barrier is called the Rayleigh limit and is equal to about 250 nanometers. The detail of a microscopic sample can be resolved if it is bigger than that. If it is smaller, the detail cannot be resolved. The image in the microscope is just a blur. The reason this is important is that the Rayleigh limit is also a barrier to obtaining information. When it comes to trying to understand something as small and as dangerous as a virus, this matters. So how small is small? And what can Super Twin do about it? This is a human hair, just over one-tenth of a millimetre wide. Translated into smaller units, this is about 100 microns. If we zoom in further, this area is a single micron. And that single micron is 1,000 nanometers. The Rayleigh limit is around 250 nanometers. A typical flu virus is between 80 to 120 nanometers, very, very small, and well below the Rayleigh limit. So the virus is just a blur. There is no direct visual information. To break through the Rayleigh limit, SuperTwin uses a very peculiar feature of quantum physics. Under specific conditions, it is possible to generate particles of light, photons, that show a very odd behaviour. Some of them become one and the same thing, even if they are in different places. They become entangled with each other. It was a Danish scientist called Niels Bohr who pioneered quantum physics and discussed it with Albert Einstein. They were both puzzled by the idea that information might be correlated between particles in different places, entangled. It is quite unreal, and Einstein described it as spooky action at a distance. The physics remains obscure, but by the early 1980s entanglement was shown to be very real. The Super Twin project is led by researchers from Fondazione Bruno Kessler, located in Italy. The project includes research groups in Switzerland, France, the Netherlands and Belarus. It is funded by the European Union and is a partnership between nine universities, research centres and commercial enterprises. This is how Super Twin is designed to work. A sample is put in place. It is then illuminated by a radiating stream of entangled photons. Many of these photons are scattered and these are picked up by single photon detectors. After interacting with the sample, the information contained in the entangled photons as a whole is more than the information contained in each individual photon. Step by step, photon by photon, this mass of information can then be extracted mathematically and pieced together like a jigsaw puzzle. When that process is completed, the final image resolution could be around 41 nanometers, five times beyond the Rayleigh limit, and enough to see a flu virus. However, it is far from as simple as might appear, and the Super Twin partners have had to push the boundaries of technology, such as electrically pumped solid state entangled photon pulse emitters and high capacity time resolved CMOS single photon detectors. The new innovations that form the Super Twin project will provide microscopy with new levels of detail, and that in turn will open new research opportunities, particularly for biological sciences. 100 years after the Spanish flu epidemics, 
exactly why this virus was so deadly remains a mystery. Perhaps Super Twin might change that. <laughs>